Hey guys, welcome back to the Skymaster F18 build series video. Thank you so much for tuning into the build series. If this is your first time here or you haven't done so yet, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. It uh, supports the channel and uh, helps things get better. So also give the video a thumbs up. When you do hit that subscribe uh, button down below, guys, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. That was a symbol of the bell in case you didn't know. So without further ado, let's get back into this build series. Uh, we're continuing with the wing and um, still going with the wing. Anyway, so hopefully I can pick this up for you guys so you can see it. So there's the actuating arm in there right past the symbol. So we're nicely spaced there from the top fairing piece. Okay, and if we look inside here, we are uh, about, I mean, it's hard to tell exactly, but kind of around midpoint rather than previously we were almost touching this top skin. So we're definitely midpoint, if not closer to the other, uh, the other end, the top end of the wing, which is gonna be good. Okay, so pull that guy out. And um, so what I've done is is I, I have gotten the slot opened up. So I just used my Dremel bit, as I mentioned, and I uh, got that all opened up. So we're good again. <clears throat> and then this uh, carbon piece, I've just got jammed all the way towards the top. Like that. So with that um, in that position, we are... So flat to center, we're sitting at 15.3 millimeters, so call it 15 millimeters. And uh, that's gonna work way better than uh, what we had previously. Okay, so I will need to cut out another arm now. Now I do have this carbon plate, which is exactly the same thickness as the, uh, the old arms. Um, so you can cut this stuff a couple different ways. I will sometimes use my scroll saw. The problem is when I when I use my scroll saw, basically one of the bits is destroyed. It doesn't matter if it's a metal bit or what, but I find they just absolutely destroy um, saw blades. So what I'm what I'm going to use on this is just my Dremel, and uh, same thing I used to get the uh, piece out of the surface, and uh, tried to to tuck this as close to the edge as possible, and just traced it out with a paint marker. So what you do when you when you do this. This is pretty straightforward stuff, guys, but you know sometimes these little tips are are helpful. So what you do when you uh, when you actually um, grind this out or cut this out is you're basically just making the white disappear, right? So as soon as the white disappears, then you're roughly the good uh, the the proper shape. So when that uh, when I get that sanded out and cut out, then what I'll do is I'll put another one over top and just mark that with uh, with a drill bit or drill the holes. Uh, as I go, and uh, then it'll be exact match to what uh, what we have there. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to get this glued in place, guys. And this time, I'm going to uh, make sure that this doesn't fall, and uh, we will get that uh, high solid in place. We'll have to wait till tomorrow to uh, to do that uh, to do anything with the the rest of this uh, regular flap surface. But uh, that's the next step here. All right, guys. So we're going to cut the slot in the servo uh, hatch for this side the uh, the aileron so the easiest way I've, I I uh, find to do these is on this servo we're not going past center this way okay so we're gonna basically get it lined up uh, we don't well I obviously did all these marks already but we don't really know where it's going so we make our backwards mark which is actually a little bit too far so we can go to about there which is fine and then full servo deflection we are going to be somewhere in that range and then we just mark our forward location which there will be good and then what we do is move the cover over to the side like that and then just mark the this edge that edge obviously adding a little bit adding a millimeter or two and then now we've got our our location. 
There we go. So now we've got our opening nicely cut, nicely square. We'll just use our Dremel and uh, open that up and uh, I'll show you guys the finished product. All right guys, so there's the finished product. Um, I'll take a bit of uh, rubbing alcohol and clean the, the marks off. Will come off no problem. So we've got, um, that's as far back as the servo is gonna go. So we got plenty of room there. And then if I go all the way forward um, and actually move the surface, the surface pops out of the, uh, of the channel. So we'll probably maybe only need to go that far or less. So anyways, nice clean servo hole. Works really well, and I'll clean that up with a bit of rubbing al alcohol, and she'll be uh, perfect. All right, guys, so I added the other screws in the servo, um, drilled out the cover, and obviously the, uh, the other side at the same time. So the kit includes these tiny little screws here, which uh, are for the doors or the cover plates. Um, anyways, we're going to screw those on, and... Uh, Get that cover plate done. Alrighty guys, there is the result of my uh, Dremel work with the uh, making the new servo horn or the, uh, the surface horn, whatever it's called. So we will have to drill, uh, drill holes in there and then rough up both of the, uh, the horns, but uh, that's what she looks like. So easy peasy and uh, we'll use those on the other wings. So with, uh, with this um, horn all cured now, I'm going to uh, work on getting this, uh, this surface set up. Um, shouldn't be too much trouble. I think this, uh, that um, rod that comes with the kit, it's actually the shortest, it's actually the shortest rod of the bunch, I think is still too long. Um, but I'll uh, I'll get this kind of in position and we'll uh, we'll see what she looks like. So because the way this one's routed, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to uh, to deal with. I mean this this side over here was uh, the uh, the aileron side was a lot easier because of the external linkage. Uh, this one because it goes inside the uh, the hole there, it's going to be a bit of a trial and error process. But uh, so I'll get this all hooked up and I'll show you guys the result. All right, guys, so we got everything hooked up. Um, the stock rod actually worked. I just had to cut one end off. So I cut the end off that goes into the into the ball joint and uh, just minimize the threads. On the other side, um, it might be hard to see, but uh, there's just a little bit of the uh, the threads poking out of the clevis. So worked out really, really well. Um, I'm just setting up some of the initial travels on these flaps and um, so we're zeroed out. Now the middle flaps, I've got way too much middle flaps. Um, it's only 38 millimeters of travel, so it's gonna be a lot less than what it is right now. But the reason I'm keeping mid flaps where it is is because the servo horn is centered up and down currently, so when I set that other servo up, I can set it up straight up and down to match um, match the surface. Then once the other wing's done, then I can play with the uh, the flap settings. Now the uh, the max flap is correct, and that's set at 70, uh, 70 millimeters from um, the root edge. So that is zero flap, and that's max flap. So we do have um, a little bit of up aileron actually. So when you look in the manual, um, there is 15 millimeters of up aileron. So um, the way when you set this up, the uh, with the flap nice and level, and the aileron zeroed out uh, to match the flap. There actually is some movement up, so we're uh, we're 15 millimeters up, 25 down. Uh, I think there's a little bit too much down right now, but that's uh, that's our aileron. And then what we what we are also going to do is, I believe I forget what settings, but we're also going to match the uh, the aileron to the flap, um, and then there'll still be aileron movement as well. So those are some of the things we have to play with uh, near the end, but. Uh, 
All right, guys, just uh, before I put the servo cover on here, there's the, uh, the finished product. I put the other screws in. Uh, that shiny bit you see on there is just because I put CA uh, as well on those, uh, those nuts and just put uh, sprayed some, uh, some kicker on the area. So anyways, guys, I'm going to put the cover on the, uh, the uh, main flap, and um, that step will be done. All right, guys, so the cover's all on. Both surfaces are done. Uh, next thing we're going to work on is this piece here. So the other covers go on fairly easily. Um, they're they're nicely slotted and everything so they they'll fit on there quite easily There's going to be a little bit of sanding on the inside um, This one's not bad, but the the one that goes over on this one uh, There's a lot of excessive glue that prevents that from from clipping on so those will be nice and easy to install But uh, this one's going to be uh, a fair bit of work So the first step here is we need to uh, clean spend some time cleaning up the excess glue out of the inside and then also uh, opening up these uh, the the openings there because they're they're too narrow um, don't fit on this stuff so we've got to open those up a little bit which is no problem just use the Dremel and grinding tool and have at her so both of them need to happen this one as well and uh, so we'll spend a little bit of time grinding this and then we'll uh, see what we're going to do as far as uh, fitting these on the wing go all right, guys, so we've got these uh, pieces all sanded. I'll show you kind of what uh, what I came up with. So this, um, this forward piece sits a little bit like that. So if you actually measure at the wing root, um, this is angled a little bit outwards. So it doesn't need to be parallel with this piece, but pretty close. Um, so like that is about lined up. All right, so here is the original. I'll get that lined up fairly well. And you can see depth-wise how much I uh, had to sand off. And the reason for that is if you keep this piece, it kind of comes down as a on a return angle and uh, doesn't work. That... Uh, the um, the carbon piece that goes in here, um, you know, when this starts to go at an angle and the flaps come down, there's just no way for this to to have enough clearance. So that's why you need to cut that much off. And I'll show you this view as well. So you really don't have to do a whole lot at the bottom portion here. It's just this top section. So I might have to still remove some more, which isn't a problem because the uh, the larger piece still covers it. But it uh, gives you an idea of how much you have to actually get rid of. And then you have to clean up the inside to, uh, to open up the opening quite a bit as well. So that's the rear piece. And the front piece. So that uh, gives you that view right there. So a little bit off the length of it at the base here. And then uh, not really anything off the uh, off this portion, um, other than what comes off just from opening up the uh, the actual piece itself. So you can see the difference there. Obviously, this is the one I've opened up, and uh, this is the original one. Okay, so there's a lot of excess glue there that needs to that needs to um, come off, and then the inside. You can see the, I uh, just need to sand down all this, this funky stuff right there as well. So anyways, guys, that's, uh, those are the fairing pieces. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way everything fits now. It's going to take quite a bit of lining up though. And, uh, just making sure that we're all, uh, we're all, all good as far as positioning goes and stuff. So I'm going to work on that next and uh, basically my goal is to get this this wing I think I've talked about this before get this wing 100% with the exception of the um, the leading edge flap because we're waiting for the servo horn we do have those on order and um, get this wing 100% because then we have to copy the other wing so those pieces are next. All right, guys. So I changed the uh, the resolution, on, or I changed, sorry, the setup on the uh, the servo horn here just to get better resolution with the servo. Um, my dual rates were down to like between ten and twenty percent. 
Um, so that's, uh, that's going to affect things a little bit, but um, I actually didn't have to do anything with my previous sanding there. I just uh, moved the arm down and it just clears my, my sanding that I did. So it actually works out really good. Um, so what I did was I actually had to uh, thread these pieces in more. I got the, uh, the zero set up. And uh, now when I go to mid flaps, I have to adjust that a little bit because it doesn't get quite the travel. And then full flaps, same thing, need to add a bit more travel to it. So, But uh, that looks good. I'm going to have to play with the resolution on the dual rates because we're not getting the uh, the right amount of travel. So I'm just going to get that all set up. It's really nothing to, uh, to show you guys. It's just a matter of adjusting the travels again in all the positions. So I'm going to get that done and then I will, uh, I'll start working on the, the fairing pieces and stuff for the, uh, for the wing. So, okay guys, I want to try and capture this process as, as best as possible. So you have an understanding of what, uh, what I'm trying to do here and, and to set this up. So, um, so I, I showed you all the sanding I did on this guy here. Um, now if we go to full flaps. Now the flap setting full flaps is as per the manual. So that's how we're doing it. Um, so if we if we drop the flaps or lessen the flaps, then it won't be an issue. But um, then also the movements as well too are as per the manual. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding full deflection. Now if I take this and move it forward, okay, I'm gonna try and zoom in here. But if I move it all the way forward, we've created a bit of a gap right there. Okay, and uh, what we're trying to do is avoid that gap, uh, but still keep it in the correct position. So that's about as far forward as I can go. Now if I drop this down, holding it in the same spot, and then we take the front piece and install it. So that's kind of how I'm getting this set up. Now the front piece, I've sanded the length as well too, like I showed you previously. And uh, we don't want to be going um, on to the, the leading edge, right? So we've got to position this so there's no interference up front. And um, that's kind of where we're positioned um, with both of them now. So We've got a really, really good setup. Now there's just a hair of a gap on the top. Uh, joint there you can see and uh, which is is good I'm totally okay with that and uh, we should have no interference so so with that being done what I'm gonna do is I can take this piece off for now I'm just gonna use a piece of tape and mark my distance so that part is repeatable now okay so that part's done now I can go to full flap again Check this <clears throat> with full deflection. And she looks good. If I go forward a little bit, I actually still have a bit of room there, but we start to create a bit of a gap if I move that forward. But if I'm in line with my tape joint, then we don't create any gaps. So um, good distance wise with that. And then what I'll do is put this one back on. Okay, full deflection on the leading edge. And make sure we're just tight. So there's there's about a, a two millimeter width in between the uh, leading edge and the, the fairing piece. And we're not gonna, there's no way to get any more travel out of the leading edge because that arm's bottomed out. Okay, so then with that, now what I want to try and do is get this lined up nice and straight. Okay, so we're just at our tape mark there. Now we're nice and straight. The front edge needs to be in just a little bit because this isn't centered. Okay, and uh, I think that looks really good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take tape and run the masking tape along the sides just so I have, a, again, a repeatable position for these um, pieces as I'm taking them on and off and figuring out how I'm going to attach them to the wing. Okay, so I'm going to put the tape down and I'll show you the next step. Okay, guys, so I've taped everything off. Okay, marked all the limits for everything. 
So what we need to do now is we need to figure out what's your problem? Oh, Luna needs a belly rub. Okay, belly rub for Luna. Sometimes she just needs a belly rub. Okay, so, um, oh, here you come for more, right? Um, so basically, there's there's lots of different ways to do it, but um, I think we're gonna what I'm gonna do is use uh, basswood, basewood, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Everybody's making fun of me for the way I said decals, not decals. Anyways. I don't have any decals to install on this plane. So I think we're gonna, what I'm going to do is for this back piece, uh, I'm going to notch out the piece of uh, basswood, basewood. What? What? And it's going to go, <laughs> it's going to kind of go into the, oh, good speak. It's going to go into the carbon piece there. Good speak, Luna like that and uh, then the fairing will go over top and uh, two screws will attach in the sides so that's my initial plan there <clears throat> uh, try that all again Thanks. okay guys so I got the um, the piece made up here uh, the R is rear the F is front so you can see it's got a bit of a bevel towards the front edge there and uh, fits nicely in the uh, the fairing piece like that. Okay, I actually uh, accidentally cut out the one that I haven't done any sanding to yet, but this is the one that we're going to be using. So that's the front piece. Uh, fits great. Now, Now, purely based on positioning, that's going to be mounted roughly in that location. And what I can do is mark that on the tape. And then as long as we center this piece in between the tape, we'll be in the right position. So that's fine. Now, what else we can do as well is when this gets mounted... Um, I don't suspect the rear is going to be loose, but uh, what I'm going to do is a bit of a preventative measure here just in case. So in this section, we can put a piece of this basswood. This is this is too wide right now, but we can put a piece in there. Uh, the fairing goes over top, and then we can just put a single screw in, the, in that spot just to uh, help anchor the backside. So nice, quick, simple solutions. Uh, not overly complicated, but nice and strong. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to get this part sorted out, and then we will um, glue these down with 20-minute high saw, and I'll show you what that stuff looks like or what it is. And uh, that should work beautifully. Now these have been treated with CA, so I've uh, I've soaked them with CA, so they're they're nice and stiff. I'm going to do all the edges of it though, and um, just make sure that's done, and then we'll have a nice uh, surface to screw into. So next thing I'm going to do is get this sorted out as far as depth goes, and then once that's done, then we will uh, be able to glue these onto the wing. Luna, sit. Pa, good. Good girl, nice to meet you. Other paw. Oh, good girl. Other paw. Good girl. You're on camera. <laughs> okay, guys, so I've got all the pieces cut here and uh, ready to go. So as with anything, it's really important to sand the surface down to get good adhesion uh, so we're just taking the paint off is all we're doing and I just use my standard Dremel bit and just rough it up a fair bit so so that's the front piece we're just going to get it centered in between the marks and also centered in between the tape okay so that's that one this guy here I cut out and uh, it's got a bit of a notch and I got it all positioned uh, it's got a bit of a bevel on it maybe you can see it better there but that gets inserted in that area. Now I haven't treated that with CA yet, but I'll glue this in place first because the pores are open on this side. Then I'll be able to just uh, soak it in CA and that'll uh, work well. And then this little piece here goes on the side 
It's already been sanded down. And again, the marks more or less are just for us so we know where we're screwing into because this position wise doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna get those, those glued. Now what I'm using for glue is um, Hysol EA E-00NS. Now this stuff, uh, five minute work life, um, it's kind of a clear color. So it's not, uh, it kind of stays a little bit um, soft for, for quite a while. It's got a bit of a stinky smell to it, even though it says low odor. But um, it's a, it's very, very different from the standard high saw, the 9462. Yes, very different from this stuff. Uh, this stuff dries hard. Um, I'd, I'd say brittle, but I'm only saying brittle because compared to this, it's different. But uh, I like this stuff because it uh, sets up quite quickly. Um, you really have to wait about 30 minutes to an hour before you can work with it, but uh, it sets up nice quick, nice and quick. So that's what I'm going to use on this type of stuff, and uh, I find it works really, really well. So I will uh, get these glued in place and uh, show you guys the, uh, the result. So just to show you, uh, yes, it looks like a heart. Aww. Uh, this is what it looks like if you've never used it. Uh, so it's kind of a clear consistency. <laughs> and... Uh, where would we be without trusty bent screwdriver? So anyways, I just thought I'd show you that and uh, so you can see what it looks like. All right, guys, we just have these various items providing pressure while this stuff cures. And uh, I'll show you the finished product in about uh, 30 minutes when that's all done curing. Okay, guys, all of our little pieces are uh, pretty much set. Uh, the glue is still soft but it's uh, set enough that uh, all the pieces are um, in their places and uh, we don't have to worry about them moving at all. But if you can see here, the glue is still soft enough. And that's kind of what this this uh, this type of Hysol does. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't stay gooey like this, but it stays um, a little bit more flexible. So just keep that in mind if you're ever using it. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to install these pieces next and um, they're fairly simple to install. Uh, they don't need to be overly complicated but I've, uh, I've sanded them down so all the pieces have been sanded and uh, what I'm going to use to glue those down is just shoe goop. So they kind of just, they, they only sit one way on there so you can see that the, uh, the pattern essentially lines up with uh, the uh, the design of them so it only goes so far forward and uh, sits like that same thing with these other ones basically um, you know it only only allows it to go so far so all right guys so I've already done these two and um, that's basically the process the nice thing about the shoe goop is it doesn't flow like normal glues so when you get a little bit oozing out like this you just take it and uh, of course you need a bent screwdriver in order for that to work. I'm kidding. But uh, it's really easy to clean up. So I'll show you this, uh, this last one which goes on the very end. And uh, I'll show you how I do this. So don't need a whole bunch. If you put too much on obviously it's going to ooze out. So we'll just put a nice thin layer up top here. And probably the nicest thing about this stuff is if you need to get these pieces off, you can pry them up. It's not going to be very easy, but you can pry them up. Now, you don't have a lot of working time with this stuff. It's solvent-based, so it will uh, skin over on you quite quickly. It's not that you don't have, like, time. I'm just warning you guys that you don't have minutes to work with it, so... Okay, so that one's bottomed out. Just give it a nice push. Of course, you get a little bit oozing out there, which I'm not going to worry about at this current time. So what I'll like to do here is put down my first piece of tape. Use the bent screwdriver. 
just get that. And the reason it's it, it's nice because it skims over, so you can actually scoop that up, and there's zero residue on the uh, on the wing. Now we'll just put a little piece on the front. Sorry if it's a little jiggle, you guys are resting on the wing, so. Okay, so those are those three pieces, right? Little one, medium sized one, and big one. Okay, so those are done. And uh, next thing we'll work on is uh, mounting these guys. All right guys, these are the screws that I use to fasten the, uh, the fairing pieces onto the wing. And there's a couple different sizes here. There's short ones, long ones. Um, I just use a mix of, of those guys. I think those are the standard servo screws that come with some of the uh, the servos. Not the JR ones, or the ones with the little gap on them, or the, the shoulder bolt, um, the shoulder piece, but just the, uh, the standard servo screws. That's what I used. And uh, here is the finished product. So I think it looks really good. I'm happy with everything. Went through and touched up all the screws with gray paint, just as a nice little finishing touch. Obviously the tape's still on these pieces because we are waiting for them to dry. But uh, the wing is effectively done up as far as we can possibly do it. And everything looks like it's gonna work just peachy. All right guys, we did manage to get a smoke tank. Thank you, Bob, for that. We really appreciate it. And uh, this is a tank, one of the spares that he had. And uh, he also manufactured this, uh, this piece for us, which is beautiful. And uh, nice work, by the way. So this is going to work a lot better than the, uh, the Ultra Flash tank. And, uh, I mean, the Ultra Flash tank is probably um, two and a half times that length. So this is going to sit nicely in this part of the fuselage. So the primary fuel tank is going right here. And uh, where the front portion of the fuselage um, attaches to the rear portion is where we want to put this tank. So it's great. Um, the Ultra Flash tank would have come out to about here. So huge difference. And uh, I think this works out to be about 2 liters. The Ultra Flash tank, I believe, is just over two liters. So great, uh, great smoke tank. All right, guys, so that is effectively the end of this video. We do have one wing 100% complete at this point, which is totally awesome. No, sorry, we don't have a, a wing 100% complete. We have a wing uh, complete as far as we can make it complete, um, with the exception of that leading edge. So, and the servo connectors and stuff. So, that portion's done. Um, now, I'm going to be working on the other wing. It's going to go much quicker than this one did, um, but I'm not going to video any of it because it's exactly the same thing. Uh, maybe when they're both done, I'll show you guys uh, with the wing sitting together all set up and plugged into the receiver and everything. But uh, that's what we're working on next. I'm not going to film that portion, but what I am going to film is uh, what I'm moving on to next, which is the elevator servo install. So another big portion of the build, uh, another fairly, well, very important, but it's all important, but very important portion of the build and uh, somewhat technical as well too, getting everything set up because of the way it's designed with the, the servo and bearings plugging into the elevator. So um, that's what we're, we're going to be moving to next. That'll be the next video. Probably will take an entire video to do that as well too. So that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have watched this far and you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button down below, guys. Very, very important because it supports the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. It's also a way you can support the channel. And uh, last thing, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you list them below. My email address is listed below. So if you don't want to comment there, you can send me an email address or an, an email as well too. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We will see you in the next one.